हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल सो फ्रेंड्स एज यू नो दैट आई हैव स्टार्टेड द सीरीज ऑन दिस ड्यूल फ्यूल इंजन दैट इज एल जी आई पी सो दिस इज द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ द वीडियो इन दिस वीडियो आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट द सप्लाई सिस्टम सो सप्लाई सिस्टम बेसिकली कंसिस्ट ऑफ थ्री पार्ट्स वन इज द डेक टैंक देन फ्रॉम डेक टैंक द एल पी जी और द प्रोपेन गोज टू एफ जी एस एस स्किड एंड फ्रॉम स्किड वाई फ्यूल वॉल ट्रेन इट इज ट्रांसफर्ड और इट इज सप्लाइड टू मेन इंजन सो इन दिस वी विल जस्ट सी वन ऑफ द पार्ट ऑफ द सप्लाई सिस्टम दैट इज द डेक टैंक वी विल सी ऑल द माउंटिंग्स वॉट ऑल माउंटिंग्स आर देर ऑन द डेक टैंक हाउ डेक टैंक इज फिल्ड एंड वॉट वॉट ऑल द सेफ्टी इज प्रोवाइडेड ऑन द डेक टैंक सो लेट्स बिगेन विद द वीडियो so friends before going any further let's discuss about the mode of operations of these engines so these engines can be operated in two modes in one mode uh, it is the primary fuel mode in which these engines uh, run 100% 100% on primary fuel that is the marine fuels uh, vlsfo or mgo or lsmgo or diesel oil so these are primary fuels so in this mode it will take 100% as marine fuel and in dual fuel mode it will take 10 to 15% of marine fuel and almost 80 to 90% of gas fuel that is the propane so don't get confused with the name dual fuel so dual fuel uh, doesn't mean that it will always run on uh, um, lpg or propane Uh, when there is emergency or during maneuvering these engines are uh, working like normal engines but when uh, they are running at mid sea on a particular load then it, in that case they can be changed over to dual fuel mode so this is what the mode of operation of these engines so keeping this thing in mind that uh, this primary fuel supply system is uh, known to everybody i will just discuss the supply system for the secondary fuel so let's see the uh, supply system for the secondary fuel so friends uh, for running the supply system we should have some cargo in the deck tank so for filling deck tank for the first time that is a very complex process so that we will discuss in some other video but let's take a scenario where there is some cargo or in the deck tank means that deck tank is not completely empty so we have to fill deck tank for a uh, sufficient level so that we can run the pumps so there are three ways by which we can fill this deck tank so one way is from the cargo cargo tank deep well pumps so if you are sailing on a gas carrier then uh, there will be cargo tanks and each cargo tank will have individual cargo pumps so with the, these pumps we can fill this deck tank but one thing we have to keep it keep keep it in our mind that if this deck tanks are insulated insulated means they are uh, thermally insulated Uh, that there is uh, less heat increase inside the system so in that case the deck tank pressure will be maintained at 3 to 4 bar so in that case you can directly fill the deck tank with the uh, cargo dwell pumps but in case if deck tank is not insulated then the deck tank pressure can go up to 10 to 11 bar so in that case it won't be possible to fill the deck tank with the help of cargo dwell pumps because the discharge pressure of the cargo deep well pumps is uh, 7 to 8 bars so it won't go so the solution for that is to drain the vapor or depressurize the tank with the help of these valves or these vapor valves so we can depressurize or bring the pressure down to around 3 to 4 bar and then with the help of uh, cargo deep well pumps we can fill this deck tank so this is one way 
another way is uh, from the condensate return from the reliquification plant so carbo uh, sorry gas carriers they have this reliquification plant so the discharge or the return from the or condensate return from the uh, re reliquification plant can be directed to this filling line or this bunkering line and these tanks can be filled in this also the tank pressure has to be at around 3 to 4 bars at the time of filling so depending upon whether the tank is insulated or it is not insulated we have to take action and bring the pressure to 3 to 4 bar before filling it the third third method is uh, we can take bunker directly from the shore or uh, directly from the ship's manifold so in that case uh, mostly the ship's manifold pressure is around 1 to 2 bar so for that we have to almost uh, depressurize these tanks to uh, 0.5 bar then only we will be able to fill these tanks so this uh, this is the filling line and this is connected to uh, ships uh, liquid liquid line plus condensate line plus from the manifold so with these three three systems we can fill this deck tank and uh, one safety is also provided for uh, filling this tank that is the high level switch so in case it is uh, filled to high level then it will trip all the cargo equipments like the cargo detail pumps the cargo compressor that is the re liquefaction plant and plus uh, the uh, cargo manifold walls and plus the filling walls for these systems like this this wall so this uh, high level switch is a safety provided during filling now friends let's discuss about some of the walls that are helping in automation of the system so as you can see uh, this is the flow control wall so this wall basically maintains the flow uh, flow discharge to the fgss kit fgss is fuel gas supply system so from here the fuel is uh, deliver to FGSS skid so in that skid the flow is to be maintained so this flow value can vary for system to system depending upon the requirement and the other function of this wall is that to uh, save the pump from getting overheated like suppose the FGSS skid inlet wall is shut that in that then in that case these pump will get heated up because of the churning effect that is the liquid won't be flowing uh, out from these pumps and it will get heated inside the pump casing so to prevent that these walls are provided so that some liquid is always flowing in the system so this is this is how this helps to maintain the flow in the uh, system to the FGSS kit as well as prevents the pump from get, uh, from getting overheated and other wall which is provided over here is the pressure control wall so this wall basically maintains the tank pressure so we have to set the tank pressure by setting the PID value of this wall so we have to maintain the tank pressure such that this wall should not open because we have separate safety wall for the tank so this wall is basically for lowering the tank pressure for filling the bunker in other cases we have to keep this wall shut so for that mostly if we maintain the setting to around 12 bars then in that case this wall will always remain shut because uh, if this tank is not insulated then the maximum pressure tank pressure that will go is will be 10 bars so uh, to maintain the pressure at around atmospheric uh, so 10 bar we have to keep it at 12 bar and if we keep the keep this wall 
at uh, less lesser pressure like suppose if i set it at 7 bar then in that case what will happen some of the cargo will be continuously leaking and it will be uh, going to the cargo system from the vapor line so we have to maintain the set pressure of this wall so that nothing goes out of this tank and pressure is also maintained don't worry about the safety because uh, separate safety walls are provided on this tank separate two safety walls are, uh, uh, walls are provided on this tank so these are the two important walls that are pid controlled and that helps in automation of this system now let's see few of the tank mountings or deck tank mountings which are there so common spill back wall is this one which i have already explained in detail then there are two safety walls so these two safety walls are actually not there in this schematic diagram so basically two safety walls are provided that are set uh, at around 18 to 19 bar pressure so, and they are both they both are set at the same pressure then we have pid control vapor wall so this is the pid control vapor wall this also i have explained in detail then uh, we have a level gauge so level gauge is also provided on the deck tank that indicates level in the CCR then we have high level switch and alarm so this is a safety for bunkering operation as I already told you that during filling operation if there is some high level uh, in the tank then in that case it will trip the whole system then we have a drain wall so this is the drain wall friends so in case we have to uh, empty this tank then we have to simply open this wall. So this wall is actually connected to the filling line. So uh, if we shut this wall, this filling wall and open this wall, then with the help of filling line only, we can empty or drain the whole deck tank. Then we have IG wall. So IG wall is provided for inerting the tanks. So I, uh, I think I have not told you, but uh, for any man entry or after man entry we have to uh, fill the propane again then in that case we need ig and for uh, gas ring also we need uh, ig at some stage so this ig wall is provided that is also not shown in this so ig wall is there so that uh, for filling the uh, cargo of filling the fuel in this tank for the first time we have to first fill the tank with the IG then only we can fill the fuel or propane in the tank and similarly when we are emptying it or uh, removing the whole cargo and uh, putting the fresh air inside then in that case also we need IG so that is why IG wall is also provided or basically IG line is also connected to the deck tank system then we have pressure and temperature transmitters that gives reading in the CCR. Then we have a manhole for the entry. So this is the manhole which is provided for the entry. And the most important things or the mounting are the pumps. So these are the two low pressure deep well pumps that are provided on the deck tank for supplying the fuel oil to the FGSS skid. So friends, now let's see the LP pump. So basically two LP pumps are there on the deck tank and these pumps are VFD controlled. So basically uh, the RPM is controlled by the VFD so that they maintain a set pressure or they increase or decrease the RPM depending upon the main engine load. So that is why uh, two two type of control are there in the whole system in the previous slide i told i have told you that there is a common spillback wall that maintains the flow and this bfd maintains the pressure so both pressure as well as the flow both are controlled simultaneously with the help of this wall and the pump bfd now let's uh, discuss about the features or the parts of this pump so this part you, as you can see is the motor plus coupling and this is the pump which is there inside the tank so this pump 
have a footwall at the end so if we have to carry out some kind of maintenance on this pump then we can simply shut this wall uh, from the tank top or from over here over here we can shut this wall football and we can carry out the maintenance on this pump and uh, there is a secondary barrier or secondary safety also provided which is this static seal so if we engage uh, uh, this static seal as well as this football they can, then we can simply uh, work on this bearing arrangement or we can change the loo oil of this bearing or fill loo oil uh, depending upon our requirement without emptying the deck tank so if these two safeties are not there then for carrying out any kind of maintenance work on these pumps we have to completely empty the tank and then only we we, we would be able to do it but with the help of these footwall and the static seal even when the tank is uh, full of uh, fuel then also we can carry out the maintenance on this bearing arrangement so this is what is all about lp pump now friends let's see how we start the lp pump so uh, before starting lp pump we have to carry out few checks like uh, like we have to check the loo oil in the bearing arrangement so loo oil has to be there for around 3 fourth of the gauge glass then we have to open the motors fan cover and with the help of some screwdriver or with hand only we can turn the fan and check if the pump is rotating freely so once these two checks are done then we have to set up the line so for that we have to open the pump discharge wall which is this wall and then we have to open the spill back wall which is this wall so these two are basically hydraulic walls and these walls will open only if a uh, few conditions or criteria are met like the power is available for this thing the the lp pumps or liquid is there in the tank then only these walls will open otherwise they have interlock with the pump so uh, this wall will not open they even have interlock with the low oil level in the uh, bearing arrangement so if uh, low low if there is a low low oil level in any of the pump then also this wall will not open and we won't be able to start the system so for that we have to check the low oil level rotate the pump then open this wall uh, spill back wall and the pump discharge wall then we have to start the pump once the pump uh, is started then we have to monitor the flow rate and if everything is uh, everything goes as per our plan then the system will set up and the flow rate will be maintained with a set pressure of uh, set pressure will depend upon the type of system in which you are selling or in uh, of your ship so this is how we start the lp pump on the tech tank so till now the cargo is available till here and uh, it is going to the fgss skid but till now the uh, skid wall or skid inlet wall is shut so cargo is uh, moving in this way and going in back to the deck tank in the uh, next videos or in upcoming in my upcoming videos we will see the fgss skid so what all components are there in the skid then we will see how we start this skid so till then enjoy and have fun